Euro Cup Europe about to get underway as this pan-European series continues its march from country to country and we've been from Nagaro to Monza, from Manicor to Hockenheim, from Masano to Paul Ricard to the Hungara ring and Imola with still Lednor, the Red Bull ring, Valencia, Paul Ricard, another trip to Monza and Barcelona at the end of the year to come. It's a busy, busy calendar and this first of two races promises to be a very lively one indeed. The championship reaching its 17th and 18th races uh, this weekend. Pole position for the first of them to a very experienced driver, but somebody who is not experienced in this current iteration of Clio. Yap van Lagen, that's raced in single-seater Renault engine cars. He's raced in World Touring cars. He's raced in Porsches. He's the man on pole position for the uh, Chefo Sports squad. Yeah. And his first pole position, his first outing in the championship with David Puget lining up on the outside of the front row of the grid and the championship is currently being headed by Nicolas Milan from David Puget. David so far this year has taken four wins to the five of Nicolas Milan but David Puget you underestimate at your peril. Quick word about the way the championship operates there's one overall championship but then because it's such a long season and because it covers so many different countries there are different groups which if you like are subsidiary championships so you take a number of the rounds and you make a, a different group and a different championship from within that so this weekend's group is group c and uh, so there's a, a separate competition within that headed by mark guillo uh, and he's six points up on thomas peckar but thomas peckar is not here this weekend so it gives mark guillo there he is an opportunity to try and break away in the championship the race is 25 minutes plus one lap and we have the cars then all lined up ready to go there should be something like 21 of them ready. Uh, in a sense, you'd have thought there might be more for Spa, but as much the uh, downside to the travelling for people, many who have to come a long way, is also the fact there's not a huge amount of paddock space. There is Nicolas Milan, who has got a lot of work to do. New livery on the car, rather than his uh, normal white colours, but Nicolas Milan is a long way back on the grid. One of his customers uh, directly ahead of him, Anthony Gerardo. Another of his customers, Mark Guillo, uh, on the row ahead on the outside. That is... Uh, Thibaut Bossi lining up sixth in the TB2S car and uh, he will be another driver to watch but it's a very very competitive championship this and it's given us a real mix of winners uh, there I'll tell you why he is here Thomas Picard uh, and uh, he is second within group C in the championship so he is on the grid and uh, Thomas Picard will try to overcome Mark Guillot get himself into the lead of group C's championship and then uh, eighth on the grid, Nicola Avea, another of the Chefo Sport cars for the Spanish driver. So as the countdown continues, then they will get a formation lap and then on to the first racing lap. As I say, we've had some really good competitive racing this year. There is the Challengers Cup for the younger drivers. There is the uh, Gentleman Drivers Series as well. Uh, the leading uh, challenger is Kevin Jimenez, who has uh, had 10 challenger wins, and the uh, Gentleman series has been rather more uh, open, but many of the regular winners uh, not taking the trip, strangely, to come and race at Spa this weekend. There, Stefan Polderman, another of the Chefo Sport drivers. He's one of the Gentleman racers, the uh, Dutch driver. So a, a proper international spread we have for this race. And lining up alongside Stefan Polderman is uh, Jerzy Spinkovics. His unique racing car is good to go. He's uh, the Polish driver, had one uh, Challengers win this year, 10th in the championship. Next on the grid there, 55, uh, René Steenmetz, another of the Chefo Sport drivers. The uh, Dutch driver hey. from the Spanish team of Chefo Sport. All excited to go. And uh, then on the outside of that row, 29, is the car of uh, Paul Cocaine. French driver, a regular in Clio Cup France as much as in uh, the Euro Cup races that we've seen this year. The TB2S squad, Tipo Bossi's team, ready to go. So the grid is now starting to be cleared. And as I say, it's going to be one formation lap before the cars slot back into place on the grid. And uh, then we will be in business. The uh, Clio Euro Cup reflecting really the strong national championships of uh, France, particularly of Italy. Uh, there is the... Uh, sort of Central European Zone series as well, and therefore uh, all of those nations being brought to uh, take part in the Euro Cup. But uh, sadly, we don't have a, a UK Clio Championship anymore, but hopefully that might be 
recreated one day. Andreas Stucki, you just saw, lining up on the seventh row. And uh, Guillaume Mayo is going to line up on the outside of him, the uh, French driver for GM Sport. Last on the grid, uh, Alexandre Alboy, who didn't get a lap time in in the qualifying session. And Alboy is normally uh, a front runner, so he could well be one to watch, assuming the car is there. Uh, we'll check when the grid forms uh, the uh, first formation lap and everyone starts circulating. Guia Mayo is there, ready to go as well, number 99. Keep an eye on him to try to make some progress over the next 25 minutes. It's not going to be that many racing laps relative to uh, some venues they've been to, just given the sheer length of the lap, with uh, seven kilometres being the lap length. There is the GPA racing car of uh, Alexandre Alboy, so one to watch up from the rear of the grid, and the grid is now being cleared. So Jat van Lagen on pole position. Uh, we saw him in single-seaters getting up to the uh, Formula Renault 3.5 level. He has had a, a spell in Porsche racing. He drove the works larders within the World Touring Car Championship. Very versatile driver is Jat van Lagen, and uh, now turning his attention to uh, the Renault Clio, these uh, splendid little cars, and he is uh, going to be very definitely uh, a driver to watch to see, first of all, whether he can make this into a maiden win, and indeed, whether we're going to see him back. I suspect part of that might be dependent on the results that come here, but uh, he'll certainly be uh, a driver to uh, keep an eye on if he does come and do more races because of his experience, and that's going to be uh, something that everybody else needs to bear in mind. So the green flag about to be waved to release the cars then onto this uh, final formation lap. There is the green flag, and so now off goes Jat van Lagen with David Puget lining up with him at the front of the grid. He's been the Spanish Clio champion as David Puget, but uh, never the French, even though he's been a regular uh, within the top three. So Jat van Lagen and David Puget are on the front row of the grid with Anthony Gerardo and Marc Guillaume for Nicolas Milan's team lining up on row two. Patron is fifth, namely Nicolas Milan, and he's got Thibaut Bossi alongside him. The fourth row of the grid, uh, Thomas Picard, the Czech driver, and alongside him is going to be the Spanish driver, Nicola Abea. On row five on the grid, Stefan Polderman and Jerzy Spinkovics. Row six is where you will find Rene Stiemetz and Paul Kokain to round out the top 12 on the grid. And you can see uh, who the gentleman drivers are, who the challengers are for the under 25s. Rene Stiemetz and Paul Kokain then round out the sixth row, the seventh row. Uh, Andreas Stucki, who's been a regular in the uh, German and uh, Central European Championship for the last few seasons. Frenchman Guillaume Mayo alongside him. The eighth row of the grid is Mariano Alonso and Henrik Seibel for the Panther Motorsport team alongside. Then you have a long way back, a man to watch, Kevin Jimenez. Ten wins he's had in the GPA racing car in the Challengers Cup. And uh, Kevin Jimenez, after dramas in qualifying, only 17th alongside uh, from Horn. Then it is Michel Fay. And Gabriel Alonso next with Alexandre Alboy to complete the grid. But Kevin Jimenez, as I say, is normally a front runner. He is fourth in the championship. He leads the challengers class within the championship and a driver to keep an eye to. As you see there, David Puget heading down through Speaker's Corner. Yat van Lagen's cleared off into the distance already, but Puget, who came from Peugeot uh, racing, started Clio's both in France and Spain back in 2016. He's been Spanish champion. He's been third and second in the French, but not yet a winner. Uh, Marc Guillot is a triple uh, Clio Cup France champion. And uh, Nicolas Milan is a multiple Clio champion. Six times he's won the French. Uh, he's also won the European, and he's also won the Spanish in his time. So the uh, red car that's fifth on the grid of Nicolas Milan definitely won to watch. He knows exactly how to race them, and he knows exactly how to engineer them. Although the customer care department has allowed two of his customers to outpace him in qualifying this morning. so. It's all gloves off when it comes to the race. There is Nicolas Milan going through the Piff Path. I'll make their way shortly up to the grid, and uh, then we will be in business then. These cars heading into the uh, campus right-hander. Anthony Gerardo on the second row of the grid, another man to uh, watch, because he too has not only been a race winner this year, Gerardo, for example, uh, has claimed now three race wins, but uh, he's also been a front-runner within the French Championship. The man alongside him, Marc Guillaume, double winner this year. Nicolas Milan behind him, five wins. David Pouget, I think I mentioned earlier on, has taken uh, three, so they've done the bulk of the winning. Uh, but we have had uh, also Gabriele Torelli having a win in Hungary, 
and at Monza as well in the fourth round, but Torelli electing not to race in this group and therefore not racing here this weekend. So vigorously trying to get some warmth into the tyres. And you can see really flicking the car from left to right, trying to get the temperature into the Michelin rubber there, Paul Kokain for TV2S to the grid they come then Jat van Lagen with all his years of experience really leaning on the car many of them at the front doing exactly that so even so much uh, effort being put through the steering to, to lift a rear wheel there Jat van Lagen so up to the grid he comes and in many ways he's going to start as the favorite here Jat van Lagen uh, was able to outpace Debbie Pouget by a couple of tenths of a second but uh, we know that Clio racing can be rowdy on occasions. Let's see how it's going to be here. Up to the grid comes Jat van Lagen then. David Pouget, the 42-year-old, second on the grid. And then next, it is going to be Anthony Girardo then. So Girardo, who was runner-up in the French Championship last year and fifth in the Spanish Championship. The calendar's such that there's a lot of crossover between the two. Girardo in the dark blue car lining up on the third rank on the grid and the very yellow very Renault colored car of uh, Mark Guillaume always draws attention to itself the all yellow car fourth Nicolas Alain fifth on the grid and uh, Thibaut Bossi then sixth as we get set to go racing the last few cars coming into position as they do so now green flag will be shown at the back it is 25 minutes plus the regulation lap the Drivers look towards the lighting gantry, and so for the 17th race within Clio Cup Europe for 2021, the lights go red, five will go on, five will go out, racing begins now, and a good start is made by, uh, from the second row, Anthony Gerardo, but a good start also from pole by Yat van Lagen. Nicolas Milan gets bogged down just a little bit, and that gives Thibaut Bossi the chance to challenge on the outside line. Debbie Pouget breaks as late as he dares on the outside line in the white and yellow car, as they round La Source for the first time. Who comes out ahead? We need to see as they drop down the hill. It is going to be Yat van Lagen, the man from pole position then, who leads the way. Pouget is behind him. Third is Gerardo. And then fourth, Marc Guillaume, just ahead of Nicolas Milan as they drop down the hill then, heading through Eau Rouge for the first time. And Jat van Lagen has the advantage, but is he now going to be susceptible to a toe? Let's see who the brave drivers are as well. At Radion, again, track limits start to be um, modified. That was Guillaume Mayo exploring the outer reaches in the uh, blue yellow, orange, black car there on the outside line as they make the climb uphill then for the first time. And look at the battle pack for the race lead as Puget goes to the outside line. Up the inside comes Gerardo, three wide into the corner and Gerardo gets a mega toe, takes over the advantage, runs out wide over the curb and Jat van Lagen comes back into the lead of the race then. Second is Gerardo, third round the outside goes Marc Guillaume in the all yellow car. Yellow and white livery is David Puget. You've also got Milan and Bossi and Picard in all of that. Down towards Bruxelles they come. Well, they might all come out the other side, you never know. Downhill they plunge then for the first time of asking. Dust is kicked up on the top two, edging away ever so slightly. Yat van Lagen leads. Anthony Gerardo is second. David Pouget runs third as they head down the hill. And then in fourth place, it's the yellow car of Marc Guillaume. Fifth is Nicolas Milan, ahead of Thomas Picard, Thibaut Bossi. And at the back of that little group is Nicolas Abea then as they drop down towards Port for the first time. So Van Lagen it is leading the way. Kevin Jimenez there, number 72, trying to get himself up through the pack, but he's got a lot of ground to make up in this race as they come then now into the right-left flick through the pit path. And with such a long lap, what you see at one corner is not necessarily the pattern two corners hence. The leading duo just edging away, but they might well be caught by the end of the lap if Pouget et al can work together and try and stop squabbling for a moment and work together and bring down the advantage that has opened up. So the leaders come now up towards Blanchimont, and if anybody looks to be making a move, it's Gerardo, is it not? Because there he is, Anthony Gerardo, right on the back of Yat van Lagen. In third place, David Pouget heading the rest, but he needs these two to hold each other up. He's got Guillaume right on his tail then. Fifth is Milan as they come out of Blanchimont, up over the curb in the background goes Thibaut Bossi, way, way wide for the race lead into the chicane they come then. This will put one lap in the book, and Jat van Lagen is ahead-ish, because right alongside him under braking was Gerardo, and as that didn't work, it means that third and fourth come right back onto their tail then, out of the chicane now. Over the line they go, and the gap between the top two at the end of the lap was just three-tenths of a second then as they go up towards La Source.
the braking zone through that tight right. So Van Lagen leads Gerardo. Damien Puget then has dropped back. And there you can see it's almost becoming a one leading line now. The five of them running together as they drop down the hill again. So they turn uphill, and there, Anthony Gerardo with a very novel line as far as track limits are concerned. That keeps up the momentum, it keeps the speed and the pace there, and he puts him right onto the back now, ready to challenge in a straight line. So Van Lagen, who knows his way around Spa, defends the inside. To the outside goes Gerardo, and David Pouget is waiting for this to end in tears ahead of him. It doesn't yet, at least. Into the braking zone they come. Pouget has got Guio right up behind him, but Nicolas Milan is fifth in the red car ahead of the orange car there, number one of Thomas Pico. He rides the curve, he drops downhill, so one lap and a bit done. Van Lagen just about hanging on to the position. Now further back, what progress from Kevin Jimenez? 12 he was at the end of the opening lap, so making some progress is Jimenez after his troubled qualifying when he was 17th, and he wanted to keep an eye to late race to see if he can gain further ground. As that leading now six in a line, drops downhill. Seventh is Thibaut Bossi, who's just falling away slightly. And then in eighth place, Nicola Avea. So downhill they pour then on towards the Piff Path. And there, with a look to the inside line, Guillaume versus Pouget. They've got themselves right up with second place, Anthony Girardo. But now, can they find a way past him before the race leader gets away? Squeal of tyres down at the campus right-hander. Driving standards flags are coming for track limit abuse. Gosh, what a surprise. But on this corner, it looks as though Van Lagen has been able to just extend that advantage a little as they come through, because all of a sudden Gerardo has got to go defensive and try and keep Pouget behind him. out of Blanchimont in a moment and down towards the chicane. Nicolas Milan not quite staying on the back here of Guillaume, but Picard dropping off slightly as well then. So who's going to be the hero this time under braking? Yap van Lagen hangs on to the advantage. Gerardo again comes up on the outside line. That leaves the door open on the inside for David Pouget to try. But they're all sort of teasing one another, aren't they, at the moment? No one's committing to a move. Late race they might do, but for the moment, it's all a bit tentative. Have a look here, have a look there, but don't commit to a move. Just eye up what your rival ahead can do, where he might be strong, where he might be weaker. Into La Source. Still, Yap van Lagen leads. Bit of a lock-up from there. Mark Guillaume, number two, the all-yellow car. That brings Milan and Picard a little bit closer. Bossi runs seventh. Abea is eighth. And so that leading sextet concertinas again as they plunge downhill now. past the endurance pits on the right, flick into a rouge and then climb up Radion, the oh-so-steep drag up the hill. And this is where you can get a toe in most cars, and it's happening now, look, for Milan on the back of his customer, Marc Guillot. So Nicolas Milan thinks about making his move now. Is this going to be the attack that he needs? Milan, who is the championship leader, five times a winner this year, can't find a way through, but Guillot locks up. Van Lagen still leads the way, but the change has happened for third place. Guio goes round the outside of Pouget. So Marc Guio then, having been attacked, is now attacking and he's gained a place. And although Nicolas Milan was quicker than anybody in the first sector, he has now been caught, because he got delayed at Le Corp by Picard, and he's on the defensive rather than on the attack. And there is Picard on the outside line as they dive into Brazil. Thomas Picard on the outside line. The car hops as it corners. But Milan all of a sudden has to go defensive rather than continue the attack on his championship rival, David Pouget, who is there ahead of him. So Pouget, four times a winner, second in the championship. They drop now into the uh, left of Pouin. The fastest lap, by the way, Kevin Jimenez, who's up to 10th place, 17th on the grid, so he's going really nicely here. So the leader, Jat van Lagen, with everybody else stacked up behind him. He can't get away, but he's not cracked under the pressure. He knows exactly how to defend. Gerardo is there trying to attack, trying to defend, of course, because he's uh, close to the leader, but he's got Marc Guillot now, who's getting increasingly toey, right there behind him in third place. Pouchet is fourth. Fifth should be Milan, still is. Sixth is Picard. He's being caught in turn by Thibaut Bossi as they turn up towards Blanchimont uh, out of the Cour Paul Frere now. But Jat van Lagen leads the hordes that are all ganging up on him. Third place then, that bright yellow car of Mark Guillot. 
And now Gerardo tries to get at the inside. There's a bit of a rub between him and Van Lagen. The door wasn't open when he started, but it was when he finished. That could have ended in tears, and it's given Gerardo the race lead. Up on the inside line, two wheels on the lawn. He's made the move, and he's made it stick, and it's all kicking off behind us now. Van Lagen is compromised, so Guillaume goes to the outside line. Pouget behind us got a bit stuck. Picard in the orange car around the outside of anybody he can find. Van Lagen up the curb and back onto the ground again. And now to the timing line they come, and it's a new race leader. Anthony Gerardo is ahead of Mark Guillo, who's up to second. Down to third is Van Lagen. Fourth is Puget. Up to fifth, then, is Thomas Picard. Down to sixth is Nicolas Milan. So all of that started with a really bold effort by Anthony Gerardo heading into Blanchimont. Two wheels on the grass, bit of a rub. As I say, it could have ended a lot, lot worse, but it's given us a jumbled order now as they drop past the endurance pits again. Onto lap four, 16 minutes to go. Laps at the moment, two minutes, 50 seconds for the Clios. So Anthony Gerardo ahead of Mark Guio, and there on the outside line, Thomas Picard runs out of road, so does Nicolas Milan, and Picard will be ahead, will he, as they climb the hill? He's got his nose in front just. And there, side by side for second place. Van Lagen tries to get back ahead of Guio. Guio trying to benefit from the toe and have a go at the race leader. They get to the braking zone again, up towards Le Camp. Who does Gerardo defend? It is going to be Van Lagen that loses out because Guio gets back into second spot. Now, Debbie Puget is there in fourth, just with all of this experience, eyeing up what's going on ahead. Nicolas Milan, likewise, in fifth. As long as you can stay in the peloton, as it were, you might have a chance to challenge late race. There is Thomas Picard, who's dropped back behind Thibaut Bossi, so we've had that change for fifth, sixth and seventh, with Milan getting back ahead of Picard, and also Bossi jumping up past him as well. Not only is it great racing in Clio Cup Europe, but, he says, slightly tempting fate, he's always clean. This championship remains one of the best adverts for what one make saloon car racing can be like for driving standards. We've had some great racing thus far, not only in the race, but in the season. And the cars don't come back wrecked. We don't have constant safety car interruptions. It's close, it's frantic, yes, but it's disciplined. And Mark Guio goes for the race lead, and he goes by. Our third different leader then, Mark Guio, very much in the ascendancy, having started winning at uh, Paul Ricard in the races supporting the French Grand Prix. So Guio, who won on Grand Prix morning, leads the pack now down towards campus, but he's got Gerardo and then Van Lagen behind him. In fourth is Pouget, in fifth is Milan, sixth is Bossy, seventh is Picard. And eighth, and almost with him, is Abea. Ninth is Yeti Spinkovic, and tenth is Kevin Jimenez. And Jimenez is on his uh, attack as well, so he'll be up with that leading gangle before 14 minutes are up, I would predict. So the cars now head towards Blanchimont. This is where last lap we had that very bold move by Gerardo. He's not quite so brave this time. And the incident between Van Lagen and Gerardo is under investigation. So was that a foul from Gerardo? Let's find out when the stewards have convened. But the leaders dive into the chicane and they're absolutely as one now. Puget starting to want to attack a little bit more. Look, he's looking a bit more committed to getting through the traffic. Up past the pits, they come again. That puts four laps in the book. So through they turn. And on this lap, Nicolas Milan is the one under attack. Look in the red car on the inside line. He's got Thibaut Bossi behind him. Bossi is then attacked by the orange car of Thomas Picard going into La Source. A little bit of a run between them, but they come out okay. So Marc Guillot leads. He is three tenths of a second up, having won, as I said, at Paul Ricard and also at Imola. The Milan Competition car is ahead as they plunge through Eau Rouge. But right there on his tail is his teammate, Anthony Gerardo, a triple winner. Gerardo having had a win at Hockenheim and the first race at Paul Ricard on Grand Prix weekend and the first race at the Hungara Ring. But Patron, Nicolas Milan himself, is on the back of Puget. Have a look for the race leaders, nose to tail though now, because Gerardo, I suspect, will make a move. Best lap of the race, Kevin Jimenez still in 10th place. And does Gerardo dive up the inside? He does not. He stays there, right up behind Guillaume, all the way up the hill to Le Camp. Van Lagen, Puget, Milan, Bossi, and then Picard, seven for the lead. down to Brussels. There, a very defensive Gerardo tries to cover off Van Lagen. Is he going to be delayed by taking that much, much tighter line? Slightly, but as he comes out of the corner, he hangs onto the position. Now, drop down through that left of Speaker's corner.
now that he's hit the front though Mark Guillo is getting away uh, Nicolas Milan again doing the absolute best in the first sector largely because of a toe but you just get the feeling now entering the second half of the race that the commitment is now starting to become a little bit more frantic you can see the way now that people are having to push that little bit harder the cars moving around a bit more so second third fourth fifth sixth seventh through the pith path out wide there goes Kevin Jimenez, the man that's leading the Challengers Cup. He's 10th and he's just about on the back of this leading line now, but he's lost a length or so, courtesy of that drama going into the pit path. Into the pits has come Stefan Polderman, who was uh, well placed on the grid. He was ninth on the grid, but he's in strife as the leader, Mark Guillo, is very definitely extending that advantage here. they do to get back onto terms with Gerardo well the first thing is they've got to work together and not squabble but the squabbling is increasing because the amount of time left in the race is decreasing so now it is more important than ever to try to make progress and that is exactly what Van Lagen and Puget are trying to do Gerardo slightly compromised as he comes into the chicane but is he a bit nearer to Guillo well he was but then the car washes out wide and so Mark Guillo builds that gap once again as they come up past the pits now down towards La Source the leading car Mark Guillo at the wheel of it has the advantage, but under braking, Anthony Gerardo taking Van Lagen with him gets that little bit nearer. They turn now out of the hairpin and once again plunge downhill. And these cars keeping the momentum up all the time is important. These 1600 turbo engine Clios, then they flick through the left right at the foot of the hill throw a rouge up Radion now and if you're really really brave you'll gain a bit of time through that section and then the toe will help as well on the run up towards Lecon but Guillaume's advantage over the line was six tenths of a second I would offer you the fact that it's going to be less at Lecon because now those behind are getting a toe and there is Gerardo with Van Lagen behind him pulling to the outside Milan doing the same against Puget new race leader Gerardo goes back in front and what about second it is now uh, Jan Van Lagen and Milan tries to get up alongside Puget there the two of them absolutely together as they head through the right out of the car but the door is open by Milan that almost enables Thibaut Bossi to make a move Gerardo leads Van Lagen to the outside line for second place goes Guillo in the yellow car and you can see how much more frantic it's getting as the clock ticks on down. So right now it is Anthony Gerardo back into the lead of the race, but for third and fourth, Puget on the outside of Guio, and being forced out wide there is David Puget, the GPA racing car, gets itself back onto the racetrack, but it's still hung out on the outside line into Pont. On the inside is Guio with a little bit of a lock, and then behind him is Nicolas Milan trying to prise open the door against his championship rival. Nicolas Milan up the inside. Is he going to be able to take the place as they come towards us at the Piff Path? That long, long queue that we had up the hill has now slightly broken up again, but it'll all get back together again, I'm sure, as Puget hangs onto the inside going into the Piff Path, and that in turn keeps Milan behind him. So the top two just broken away slightly that gap has extended by a touch as they come now back through Cor Paul Frere so this is where Guio et al have got to work together and try and stop those two dark blue cars from fleeing up the road the Chateau Sport car ahead of the Milan Competition entry Gerardo sorry is ahead of uh, Van Lagen so it's Milan ahead of Chateau Gerardo clear by a gnat at the moment as he goes way out wide over the curb does that leave a door open on the way to the chicane? No, not on the inside. Van Lagen tries the outside. It's like a rolling start, isn't it? As Puget goes to the outside of Guillo as they come now right and left up towards the end of lap six. It's the 25 minutes plus the regulation lap at the end. That could be when it gets really feisty. Over the line once again. Into the braking area through La Source then. So the all-red car, Nicolas Milan, right there on the back of Puget. But at the same time, he's trying to keep Thomas Picard behind him. Mark Rio being led briefly, trying to get his lead back. Mark Rio, one of the front-runners in the Ligier European Series last year. He's been a runner-up in the Alpine Cup as well, but coming back to Clio Racing. Quick look at what's going on in the gentlemen's driver's class. René Steenmitz is the uh, class leader front Horn second and uh, then in third spot in the class behind Horn is uh, Michel Fay. 
Now the leaders almost side by side, and Van Lagen is slightly in, a, in front as they come to the braking area. Guio is up the inside line, so three wide into Le Camp, but Gerardo does it again by being late on the brakes and having a tighter line, so Gerardo does come out ahead. Second, still Van Lagen. Third is Guio, fourth is Pouget, fifth is anybody's guess, because they're absolutely side by side. Picard is up the kerb, Milan is up the inside, and they're still together as they get down towards Bruxelles. Behind them is Thibaut Bossi. Milan breaks later and says, I'm ahead of you, Thomas. So back through he goes. Milan retakes the place. And out of all of this, Anthony Girardo's amazing spirit keeps him in the lead. Van Lagen is right there behind. And then it is Guio in third as they plunge downhill again. This takes them to Pouin. Nicolas Milan, right on the back of David Pouget. And behind him, Thomas Picar has lost a couple of lengths. So this is either going to be a really frantic last lap or it's all going to end in a big heap, isn't it? Because you can see, as I said a lap or so ago, now people are getting a bit more determined to not only gain a place, but keep that place. And the feel of the race has changed just a little bit. Kevin Jimenez, by the way, he's up into ninth spot now at the expense of Jerzy Spinkovic. So the uh, Challengers class leader looking for his 11th win of the season still hustles along as Gerardo, for the seventh time, comes out of the Corp Port Frere. Anthony Gerardo, another man with bags of Renault experience, not only from the uh, French Championship, but the Spanish as well. He was the runner-up in the French Championship last year, so he's very much a front-runner. And this is Nicolas Abea, who is the leading challenger at the moment, heading for, potentially there, uh, a first victory of the season. Uh, another driver that things were expected of, Alexandre Alboy, has only got to 12th, has almost three wide for the lead, and Gerardo somehow, again, he's able to fend them all off. Van Lagen right there behind him, and then third is Guio, way out wide go Pouget, Milan and Picard, and up towards the line. With five minutes to go comes the race leader, so we're going to get three more laps out of this, I suspect, as they come now uh, down to La Source. More task wheel, more abused Michelin as they go through the right. Now, Pouget up to third. He's made that move on the inside of Guio. Is he going to be able to stay there? Let's see as they drop downhill. Nicolas Milan also now becoming a little bit more of a factor. So the really experienced Clio drivers, the really savvy ones, will know when to push, when to hold. Uh, and right now, if you're in that leading group, you're probably well placed. But look at the way that Thomas Picar, late race, is having to defend. And he's probably dropped too far back from that leading five now to benefit from a toe. So his race suddenly starts to become a little bit more difficult for him, especially as he's wasting more time by defending. To the outside line goes Guio. Nicolas Milan tries to follow suit. Gerardo covers off the inside line. Van Lagen behind him and then Pouget third. Go right, go left, go right out of Le Camp, and then down the hill. It's been a typically fierce, frantic, and really, really good race to watch this with the cars looking Clio shaped still rather than mobile wrecks, which happens in some one mate championships. Downhill they turn again, heading towards the left of Speaker's corner, and it remains Gerardo Van Lagen and Puget the top three. But you can see again how much more effort Puget is putting into catching rather than defending. He wants to get rid of the Guio Milan battle. Guio looks to the inside line, then realizes he better cover off any thought of Milan making a move on the inside line. Uh, we did have drama at Turn 1, though, a moment ago at La Source. A bit of a hip and shoulder there that uh, rather did for number 51 there, which is the car of Henrik Seibel. Now, Pouget, look, into the back of Van Lagen. Hurry up, he says, I'm, I'm quicker than you and I want to get past because I've got this whole queue behind me. So, David Pouget, who has taken four race wins in the championship this year, wants a fifth and he's in third place and little by little he's just chipped his way forward, hasn't he? So now it gets to the business end of this race. He is right there, so there's going to be one more lap within the time, and then the regulation lap. And they come through Rochimont. 
through that fast, fast left. And it's three for the lead because Guillaume now fourth runs out wide. He's a little bit busy scrapping with Nicolas Milan. To the outside line again comes Yat van Lagen, who breaks as late as he dares. Puget covers off the inside. Milan goes around the outside of Guillaume and tries to get up the inside of Puget, but that's not going to work. Gets up the curb, gets up onto two wheels, Remo Julien style, and now up towards the line with Guillaume back alongside him in the yellow car. And all of a sudden, Picard and Bossi have joined the party again. So they've been dropped at the start of the lap, but they're right back with them as they now go onto the penultimate lap up towards the right hander of La Source now. One to go at the end of this. Downhill again. Now there, you can see a discernible gap between third and fourth. So is this David Puget's moment to strike? He doesn't now have to think about Milan behind him because that gap has opened, that toe has been broken. He's also being dragged along by the toe offered up by Van Lagen and Gerardo, who again go side by side. Puget there in third, waiting to see what pans out ahead of him. Is he near enough to be able to benefit as they come up now? Three wide for the lead. Puget on the outside line. Is he going to hit the front? He's not this time. Gerardo hangs onto it. Van Lagen locks up. And look, they've all concertinaed. Four, five, six, seven of them, eight of them, nine of them for the race lead now. So the leading nine in a line. It is somehow Anthony Gerardo still at the head of the field. I think he's led more laps than anybody else. But Jan van Lagen, the early race leader, is right there on his tail. And any one of these nine could be the winner as there. Jimenez gets up on the inside line of Nicola Abea. It's not only for place, but it's also for the lead of the Challengers Cup. So wait and see who comes back into view ahead. They're still side by side. Jimenez on the outside line there to the inside line. Nicola Abea. And Kevin Jimenez gets his nose in front, but the French driver is going to be on the longer line for Pouan. Let's watch them in they turn. If Jimenez comes out ahead, he'll be brave. He gets run out wide over the kerb, and no, Abea keeps the Challengers Cup lead. And Jerzy Spinkovic, third in class, he's right back with them. So Abea hangs on to his advantage then. One more lap to run at the end of this, as still Anthony Gerardo holds that advantage. Pouget runs third, Milan fourth, and Guillaume that did lead briefly mid-race, down to fifth now. Here come the race leaders. This is the run up towards Blanchimont. So Milan trying to close on Pouget. Pouget up with the race leaders. So how many can we get together heading up towards Le Con, which is where it all might be decided on the final lap of the race. The flag will be out not this time, but the next. There is the plus one lap board, the symbol on the timing screen, and a big, big lose. That is Gerardo. That's the save of the day. That was a massive moment coming out of Blanchiment, a proper code brown moment for him, and he hung on to it, and he's still second, but he's still in strife, and that gets him in the way of Guillo. The door opens for Puget. Gerardo leads, but surely he's going to have to give places back there because he was way off the road. Anthony Gerardo with a massive moment coming out of Blanchiment, finds himself in the lead at the end of the lap. And not only that, but four tenths up on Yat van Lagen. In third place is David Puget. Milan is fourth. A delayed Guillaume fifth. To the inside of him goes Picard. To the outside of him goes Thibaut Bossi. And out of all of that, coming down the hill, the race leader just is Anthony Gerardo. You could argue that he deserved to hang on to the race lead after controlling that massive moment. Uh, race officials might argue with it, but on this last lap, then it is Gerardo up front, and there Van Lagen's car hopping and skipping and getting sideways. He corrects it. It's four for the battle for the lead now. So, Gerardo, who's led more laps than anybody, Van Lagen is second, Puget third, Milan is fourth. And now it's not a case of sitting in the slipstream, it's a case of going for it, and Puget does so. He commits to the outside line. On the inside is Gerardo. Van Lagen is a little bit stuck, and actually, out of all of that, nobody able to benefit as they get up towards Le Con. But Van Lagen looks quicker through that sequence of corners. He tries to get himself onto the back of the Frenchman ahead. So it's France from Holland, France and France, as they come through. into Brussels once again. That inside line well and truly covered off by Gerardo, and Puget gets into the back of Van Lagen. I've told you, he says, hurry up! Milan right there behind, and Anthony Gerardo still leads. Yeah, Van Lagen up the curb in second place. The blue car with the yellow flashes down the side of it. Thomas Picard has got himself up into fifth place now, and Davy Puget thinks about the inside line against JVL, Yat Van Lagen, but he's not really near enough going there into Porn to be able to make that work. 
So through they come, and now on towards the pith path. For the last time, what a lively race it has turned out to be. We anticipated it was going to be great fun, and it has been so, and we're not done yet. Any one of these four could yet win it. Actually, Mark Rio fifth could yet win it, let's be fair about it. He comes out of the pith path then, and now on to the uh, right of campus and then the core Paul Frere. Guillaume, a bit busy defending from Picard, but Anthony Gerardo has only got only three or four more corners to go then as he comes now out of the court Paul Frere. And who's going to be the bravest through Blanchiment and down to the bus stop? If Gerardo has another of those moments, he's going to be in real strife, but he's actually gapped the second place man, Yat van Lagen, by a length and a half or so. Pouget is on the attack to try and take second place away from the Dutchman. And Nicolas Milan is right there as well, banking points. They've concertinaed again as they come down to the bus stop. This is the last chance for Heroics. Do you go for the win? And there, off the road, goes Kevin Jimenez, and that's a quite a sizable moment for him. As for the race lead, it's side by side. And through just to hang on to the advantage is Gerardo. Up to the line, Pouget's on the attack on the inside line. But Anthony Gerardo is going to come through and score a race win. That's his fourth of the year. Anthony Gerardo comes through to win a fantastic race and a brilliant advert for one mate racing as it should be. The Clio Cup Europe delivers again. Yat van Lagen is second. David Pouget takes third ahead of Nicolas Milan, Marc Guillaume, and then Thibaut Bossi comes home sixth. Thomas Picar is seventh from Nicolas Abea, Jerzy Spinkovic and Paul Kokain rounds out the top ten. But that was what a one-mate race should be. Close, competitive, really dramatic, lots of good racing, and the result in doubt, even on the run up towards the line. And so the cars there being held at uh, La Source. They'll then be waved into the pit lane for the uh, podium. The officials just making sure they've got the right ones. So let's see what happened for the uh, previous lapse dramas. That was the incident that sorted out Gerardo and Van Lagen. And Anthony Gerardo saved that, but then found himself with a little bit more of a problem, which was uh, Pouget into the back of him. So that sent him off the road, straight lines the chicane and comes back ahead. And Nicolas Milan has been shown as being the race winner. Now, the order that's come up on the timing screen is a very, very jumbled one. So it is being shown as Milan, the winner, from Guillaume and Picard. Now, this might be all to do with track limits, but Gerardo is being shown 11th. Van Lagen is being shown 12th. Thibaut Bossi is another one who has dropped back. A drive-through penalty has been applied to René Steenmetz, so that's cost him his uh, gentleman driver's advantage. But the way the result has come, it is Nicolas Milan, the race winner, from Marc Guillaume, from Thomas Picard, Nicola Abea fourth, Jerzy Spinkovic shown as fifth, David Pouget sixth, seventh Paul Kokain, uh, eighth Alexandra Alboy, ninth Andreas Stucky, and tenth uh, Mariano Alonso. That is what the timing screen is showing us. Now we haven't had confirmation of penalties, but I just wonder whether there's a transponder issue because the timing screen is still updating. And one of the reasons I suspect that no one's been allowed into the pit lane is because the result is still being debated and it's changed again with Nicola Abea coming up into third place at the expense now of Thomas Picard. So let's have another go at this. This is what the timing screen currently shows. Nicolas Milan ahead of Marc Guillaume and then for third place Nicola Abea. Jerzy Spinkovic taking fourth. David Pouget fifth ahead of Paul Kokain. Then Andreas Stucky and if you go down to tenth place you get uh, Anthony Gerardo who had crossed the line in the lead. So all of that's going to need a little bit of unravelling. Uh, as I say, we haven't had confirmation on the timing screen as to why all that has uh, changed, but change it has, and it will be uh, a very different group of drivers then that make their way to the podium in a few moments' time. So Nicolas Milan credited with the race win by half a second from Marc Rio and Nicola Abea in third place. Jerzy Spinkovic taking fourth ahead of David Pouget and Paul Kokain. Let's uh, have a look at why Kevin Jimenez ended up in the tire wall. Quite a bit of damage being done to uh, that car. And uh, he had a bit of help from Jerzy Spinkovic in all of that as well. So the stewards will probably have a good look at that. And that's high speed impact. So that's going to have a, a lot of work to be done overnight. Uh, getting reports that the reason for these penalties being applied was all for cutting the chicane but uh, that would account certainly for 
uh, Gerardo, but not necessarily for everybody else. But uh, an awful lot did go on in that race. But for the moment, um, confusion sort of reigns, doesn't it, on the uh, approach to La Source. So until the drivers are confirmed in race order, they're not being allowed back into the pit lane. And we know that René Steenmetz was given a drive-through penalty, which was converted into a time penalty, and it was for this, forcing uh, Seibel off the road, as we'd seen during the race up at La Source. So uh, a drive-through penalty for forcing another car off the road. So the marshals doing their best to sort everything out. Let's have a look at the highlights of that race. There's uh, an awful lot going on, and uh, as the race officials are trying to unravel everything, the uh, race looked like this. Good start by Jat van Lagen to put him into the race lead, and as he blasted up towards La Source, he managed to consolidate the advantage with a quick starting David Pouget going with him, but Anthony Girardo was not messing about, and he was uh, working his way through into the leading gaggle as they ran through Le Camp for the first time. But effectively, we had the leading seven all in one gaggle, all trading places all the way through, and fantastic racing with the uh, driver leading most laps being Anthony Girardo, but not taking the advantage. There was this incident he had with Van Lagen anyway that was being looked at, so there is that as well to factor in and uh, Mark Guillo was a driver that worked his way through briefly into the lead, way up onto the curve and onto two wheels there went Gerardo. Guillo did eventually hit the front as he came uh, through the pit path, and then Gerardo wriggled his way back ahead, taking out Van Lagen with him, those two dark blue cars run by separate squads, but running together for the bulk of the race. As ever, the gaps were uh, seesawing because of the benefit of the tow, plus the battles that raged on around the lap. And so, as the uh, race leader, Anthony Girardo, got back into the race lead, he had his monster moment going through Blanchimont that oh so nearly did for him. He survived it, but then he had his trip across the uh, chicane runoff. Yet more drama up at Le Con. That was Mariano Alonso uh, going through and uh, gaining a place. The big, big moment coming out of Blanchimont that did for Girardo, so he fell back in the pack. He only lost one place. I mean, he could have lost a whole lot more, but then Pouget got into the back of him, and then there was the concertina effect with Van Lagen, and he had to skip the chicane, and that put him into the race lead, and Jimenez versus Spinkovic ended badly for Kevin Jimenez with a big, big hit into the tyres, and ultimately he was a retirement. So Girardo crossed the line ahead of Van Lagen, Van Lagen credited with 11th, Girardo 10th, and Nicola Menard, who was fourth over the line, has become the winner. So there are some very confused Pilot who will uh, shortly, hopefully, make their way up to the podium. Nicolas Milan trying to work out how he's the race winner, but uh, he's credited with that win by half a second from Marc Guillo, who is there uh, on his left. And uh, Nicolas Abea taking third place. Kevin Jimenez's car in the background just being grained away. So the driver's certainly not in any hurry to get to the uh, podium. And uh, drivers, as soon as they can, will be upstairs. So Nicola Milan, Mark Guillo, and then in the end, Nicola Abea for third place. Nicola Milan is the race winner, and uh, that is win number six of the season for him, although uh, you can tell that it's not really the way he wanted to win it. So the drivers chatting amongst themselves about that race, but it's a really unfortunate way for it to end, partly in terms of the contact with Kevin Jimenez, but also the confusion over the penalties that are being applied. And it's, uh, in a sense, I suppose, good that they are applied straight away. So when you get to the podium, you do see the race winner rather than it happening hours later. But uh, Nicola Milan takes that sixth race win of the season. So there you've got uh, Mark Guillot, who did briefly lead. So this is how it kind of ended up. Nicolas Milan 
ahead, even though he was fourth over the line. Mark Grio taking second and Nicholas Abea third. Uh, Yatsi Spinkovic's fourth, but he might not keep that because of the incident that he had. David Puget uh, fifth and uh, sixth, Paul Kokai with uh, Alexandra Alboy seventh up from the back of the grid from Andreas Stucky, Mariano Alonso and Anthony Gerardo, who was the first man over the line coming through in the end for that 10th place. But uh, I suspect that he will be a deeply frustrated driver as well. And uh, that story might rumble on a little bit more uh, into the evening. So the stewards and the race officials will be kept busy, I think, in advance of the uh, second race. The two that we lost, Stefan Poldermann, who pitted, and Kemi Jimenez, who's got quite a lot of damage. But uh, there were penalties flying and there were a few dramas late race. So more photographs being taken down in the pit lane. And uh, Mark Guillaume there for that second place. Kevin Jimenez had set the fastest lap of the race uh, very early on as his uh, efforts brought him up through the field. But uh, sadly, he's ended up with a, a damaged car. So track limits, I think it is, that has done for a number of the drivers. And, uh, the drivers are, I say, still chatting amongst themselves rather than making their way up the stairs. But uh, we'll have one more race from Clio Euro Cup tomorrow. And it's based on a grid from a, a separate qualifying session. So uh, early tomorrow morning, the Clio's just after 10 o'clock take to the circuit. And it should be another lively race. Half a second, the notional margin between Nicolas Milan and Marc Guillaume at the end of that race. And uh, Nicolas Milan using all of his experience, staying in that leading group. Uh, but as I say, we've had lots of black and white flags offered up to drivers for track limits, but no penalties uh, called for on the screen. It could be that there just wasn't the time to type it all in because there were so many late race. But anyway, they are the championship officials trying to get the right drivers in the right order at the right time. One twenty-five is Yeti Spinkovic's car, which in the end was second within the uh, Challengers Cup, but uh, after the contact with Kevin Jimenez, that also might end up uh, being a moot point. 88, you see, is the uh, car of Horn, the uh, pseudonym gentleman driver, who was a class winner for the second time this year. And Kevin Jimenez's car, you can just see there at the bottom of Eau Rouge, being taken off into the paddock, where hopefully it can be repaired for tomorrow. So Nicolas Milan, Marc Guillaume and Nicolas Abea having his best result of the season, an outright third place and a first class win. That's the top three. And then the uh, second of the challengers provisionally, Yeki Spinkovics and Yeti Spinkovics, and then third in the challengers contest, Paul Kokkine, Franck Orn, René Steenmetz and Michel Fay being the top three of the gentleman drivers. So this championship that ends at Barcelona in November has delivered plenty of drama thus far and uh, plenty of talking points from Spa as well as the uh, drivers then, in many cases, uh, go and discuss race one. In some cases, go and do some repair work, ready for race two. And uh, Nicolas Milan celebrates that race win. But uh, after what had been a really, really lively race, great to watch. It's such a shame that it's ended with these uh, discussions over the classification and the confusion that struck right at the very end. So finally, we've got at least some drivers to go to the podium. So the podium is about to get underway. I'll see you tomorrow for race two. And Gemma Scott will talk you through the podium. <laughs> So our drivers are there now on the podium waiting to receive their trophies. Our race winner, Nicola Milan, as he lets the win sink in, as it were, as he had a, a rather unexpected victory, a very dramatic finish to that race, of course, with the accident we saw right the, the final 
closing corners even that was with uh, Jiminy there. But uh, the drivers just understanding the final positions as they were after some disqualifications and, and black flags, drive through penalties, all sorts of being dished out for our drivers. But uh, just standing by, getting a little drink and rehydrating after the race. Now, Nicola Arbella was the winner of our challenger class, also in third place overall. And the winner of our gentleman class was car number 88. Yeah, <laughs> intriguingly named Horn. <laughs> Photographers gathering round, ready to get the drivers as they celebrate their victories in their first race here at Spa Francorchamps. A wonderful circuit that every single one of our drivers is honoured to drive on with the history that surrounds this circuit and, of course, the fun that they have through this challenging ups and downs and the left and right handers through the chicanes, of course. A wonderful circuit to drive and a circuit that always seems to throw out results that are somewhat unexpected and unpredictable. With not only crazy weather systems, but uh, seriously fun and fast parts of this circuit here in the Ardennes. We have, of course, more Clio action here at Spa tomorrow with our second race that takes place tomorrow morning, local time at 10.20. Just ahead of our feature race that takes place this weekend, of course. And just moments away from our podium that will take place here in Spa, which is just about to take place. I think the drivers are still suffering a little bit of confusion from those late race incidents, but are gathered round and ready to receive their trophies as our third place driver is called up to the podium Nicolas Avala our second place driver of course Marc Guillaume and our race winner Nicolas Milan as we hear the French national anthem